Hi boys and girls, this is Sally Morse. Many of you know me as Miss Havy. I'm a district math coach for Henrico County Public Schools. For today's lesson, we are going to be exploring SOL 1.10 measurement. In first grade, we will be using non-standard units to measure and compare length, weight, and volume. In real life, we estimate and measure weight, capacity or liquid volume, time, and temperature every day. Before I went on a run this morning, I stepped on the scale in my bathroom to see how much I weighed. I had to estimate what the temperature would be like outside so that I could dress appropriately too. Once I was in my neighborhood running, I measured the distance how far I ran or the length and my time, how fast I ran. When I came home, I drank some water from the biggest water cup that I could find so that I could stay hydrated. I've already done so much measuring this morning. Can you think of some times when you measure things? Perhaps you've seen this math tool before. It's called a balance scale, and we can use it to measure weight. You may have seen one of these when you were studying equality. For instance, two red cubes and two green cubes is the same as one red cube and one, two, three green cubes. Notice how the pan is balanced level or equal. I wonder what would happen if I took the cubes out of this side and replaced it with an apple. What do you think? What do you notice? The apple is lowered down and the cubes are higher up. This is not balanced. It is not equal. The apple is heavier than the cubes, and the cubes are lighter than the apple. I would have to use a lot more cubes to make the scale balanced to figure out the weight of the apple. I can use a balance scale to measure the weight of objects. Here, I have a large clear bucket. How could I measure this? I might want to know how heavy this is or how much it weighs. Before I measure anything, I always like to predict or estimate the measurement. This bucket feels pretty light. I think if I place it on this scale, it will be less than one pound. Let's measure and find out. Wow, the needle on the scale barely moved. This was definitely less than one pound. My estimate was correct. Now, sometimes boys and girls, our estimates are correct, but often they're not, and that's okay. The more we estimate and then measure, the better we get at estimating and measuring. How else could I measure this bucket? Perhaps I want to know the volume or how much stuff I could fill inside of it. I'm wondering how many tennis balls it might take to fill this bucket. Hmm, five seems like too low of a prediction and 30 seems like too many tennis balls. I'm thinking 12 tennis balls sounds like a reasonable estimate. Can you count with me as I fill this bucket? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 
it took me 13 tennis balls to fill this bucket and find the volume. Now I have some rocks here too. Would it take 13 rocks to fill this bucket? Hmm, what do you think? Because the rocks are smaller than the tennis balls, I predict it would take a lot more than 13 rocks to fill this bucket. I'm thinking it's probably closer to 300 rocks, but we'll save that measuring for another day. So we've looked at how much the bucket weighs when we determined how heavy it was, and we figured out its volume when we filled the inside with tennis balls. Any other ideas how I can measure this bucket? Were you wondering how tall it might be? I could figure out its height, which is another measurement of length by using these cubes. Let's see. I'm wondering how many cubes tall. I'm thinking maybe 10. Let's check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think I can keep going. Eleven. This bucket is about 11 cubes tall. It's a little taller than my tower of 11 cubes. Non-standard units can be anything you find around the house that you have a lot of. For example, you might have some toothpicks, dried pasta or dried beans, pom-poms, my personal favorite is Legos. Notice when I measured the height, I lined up my cubes with no extra space and no overlap. I also made sure that my tennis balls were the same size when I measured the volume. It's important to use the same size objects when measuring with non-standard units. If I'm comparing the lengths of these ribbons, I notice that the blue ribbon is longer than the gray ribbon, and the gray ribbon is shorter than the blue ribbon. I want to show you how not to measure using non-standard units, using my gray ribbon and my Legos. If you notice here, all my Legos are different sizes. I want to make sure that I'm using the same size Legos if I'm measuring. I also want to make sure that there's no extra space between my Legos. Instead, I want them to be all lined up. I also don't want to have any overlap. And here's an example of what overlap could look like. And lastly, I don't want to just start in the middle of where I'm measuring, like so. I want to start at the end of where I'm measuring from. I hope you enjoyed measuring with me today. If you want to try some of your own measuring at home, consider some of the following activities. To measure length, Find one thing in your home that is shorter than a spoon and one thing that is longer than a spoon. Also try to find something that's about the same length as a spoon or is equivalent. To measure liquid volume or capacity, find one thing that holds less than your favorite cup and another thing that holds more than your favorite cup. Try and see if you can find something that holds an equivalent amount or the same as your favorite cup. To measure weight, find one thing that weighs less than an unopened canned good and one thing that weighs more than a canned good. Use your body like a balance scale to measure lighter and heavier. 
Also see if you can find something that weighs about the same amount as a canned good that would be balanced or equivalent on a balance scale. Measurement is a helpful skill that we use every day. You can probably find lots of things to measure the weight, height or length and liquid volume of when you look around your house. The kitchen and recycling bin are two of my go-to places when looking for items to measure. Remember to always estimate first and then test your predictions. Happy measuring!